Well, what did we what did we see? Can we can <laughs> <laughs> Can we So now we're even drunker. Yeah. Doop doop doop. Doop doop doop. Doop Sometimes we listen to music. Hi everybody, I'm Michael and this is Molly. I'm Molly and this is Michael. <laughs> we talk a lot on the Michael channel about retro stuff and we do legitimately love all this stuff, but we also really like contemporary music, the stuff that's coming out right now. Adult contemporary? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kenny G, have you heard of him? But we wanted to talk about some music that is Current? Yeah, current to 2022. <laughs> we've broken this into some sections. New music in 22. We've got stuff that is older than 2022, but we just learned about in 2022. We've got stuff that we've always been into, but we rediscovered our love for kind of in like 2022. The stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, then we'll talk about the song of the summer since it is July and that is on our minds. Michael, what interesting music is happening in 2022? Molly, you should start. <laughs> I like the new music. Mitski album. We have been fans of Mitski for a long time. I've seen her live twice. You've seen her live twice. We've seen her together live twice. <laughs> she has a new album out called Laurel Hell. This is a long awaited follow up to her previous album, Be the Cowboy. It has a few really exciting standout tracks. Love Me More, The Only Heartbreaker, and I really like That's Our Lamp, which is the final track on the album. Here's the thing about That's Our Lamp. It feels like Puberty 2 era Mitski. So if you're a Mitski fan and you liked Puberty Puberty 2 and then you listen to Be the Cowboy and you were like, what's going on? That's our lamp. <laughs> so what I, what I think about um, comparing Laurel Hell and Be the Cowboy is that a lot of the songs on Be the Cowboy were very adventurous. She was trying new things, but the songs felt like they were just a short idea and she didn't develop that idea. The songs on Laurel like short and abrupt. Yeah. The, the songs on Laurel Hell feel like she really explores all of the ideas in a way that is much more satisfying to mm -hmm. me than Be the Cowboy was. Plus she gets really synthy with it. A lot of the synths feel like intentional retro throwbacks. Yeah. For instance, like the synth on Love Me More sounds really similar to she's a maniac maniac <sighs> i love it and it's so exciting and it's so expansive and yeah. you want to just run down the hill with her you or know up the hill like kate bush yes. which is all the rage right now this album has a kate bushiness to it obviously the album came out and was written and recorded before the sort of Stranger Things, Kate Bush sort of resurgence that happened in just the last couple of months. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, we're serious uh, uh, music critics, okay. We're not serious music critics. <laughs> Wet Leg's debut album, Wet Leg. Uh, Wet Leg is a British band <laughs> on the chaise long, on the chaise long, all the day long, on the chaise long, all the day long. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you know the song, you will appreciate Iggy Pop's assertion of the song that it is a great song partially because no two people who sing the song will sing it the same way. On the chaise long, all the day long, all the day long, all the chaise long, all the chaise long. <laughs> It's different every time. The album is super fun. It's it's, it's really good. Give it a listen. <laughs> Orville Peck has a new album. If you haven't been following him, he is the masked cowboy sensation of country music. His first album a couple years ago, uh, I was actually introduced to by my dad of all people because my dad is kind of with it when it comes to the country music scene. But um, I wasn't that into it. And then this album came out and I was like, oh yeah, I'm extremely into this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I get Johnny Cash. I get Elvis. I love, and I think everybody loves Daytona Sand. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a candidate for Song of the Summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's this like twangy guitar. I don't know how to describe it. It's other than twangy. It's like this three note guitar riff and it's like emphasized with this like glockenspiel also. And so it gives the whole thing like this magic sheen, sparkle dust. And then it has this galloping forward feeling. I love this song. I can't explain why I love this song. That song is the standout, the but 
the whole album is a, is a really fun listen. I really like Lafayette. I really yeah. like Come On Baby Cry, Come on Baby where Cry. his voice really like is the star of the show. He starts to do some like really exciting like country music vocal stylings with the falsetto mm -hmm. that is uh, so thrilling to me. And then I love Any Turn, which is that sort of Johnny Cash -ian, um, you know, uh, if you think of the song I I've Been Everywhere by Johnny Cash. Um, it does that patter singing thing and then it's just like super gay. Yeah. And the whole album really is super gay in the way that cowboys have always been, but we just didn't talk <laughs> about it. Well, it's one thing if you've got a guy with another guy waiting for you around the back. <laughs> we can also talk about Grace Cummings' album, Storm Queen. So Grace Cummings is an Australian singer-songwriter and she has one of the most interesting voices I've heard in a long time. I can't think of many people I can compare her to. I, I I think um, I hear Joan Baez and like some of those folk revival singers. She has a dark, rich, raw voice. Yeah, a lot of this album is just her and her guitar, but there are some other uh, some other musicians who join her here and there. Uh, to great effect, I really like it. I've also been really into Silvana Estrada's album Marchita lately, and she is a Mexican singer songwriter, and it's just really, really good Latin folk. We were talking about when we wanted to listen to this album, <laughs> and I was saying that I wanted to listen to it at like 8.30 p.m. On a, on a late summer day when the sun is still out and you're relaxing and having a drink. Yeah, I want to listen to it um, in, in the balcony of my uh, suite at a five-star resort in the tropics as my suite's personal butler brings me my room service breakfast and pours coffee from a silver carafe into a perfect porcelain cup. Yeah, We can move on to, pardon me if I butcher the names, Charlotte Adigeri and Bolis Popul's album Topical Dancer. They're a Belgian duo and this album is dance music, but it's dance music with a purpose. It's all very fun, but also strongly anti-racist in the best way. I want to listen to that. That's real fun. I want to dance to that. Yeah, we should. An artist that is an up-and-coming artist that we both discovered last year uh, with his first album is Barty Strange. We saw him open for Lucy Dacus last fall. He put on a fantastic show, and now he has a new album called Farm to Table, and the opening track on this album is really the standout track it's called heavy heart i talked earlier about twangy guitar but now i want to talk about sparkly guitar which i think um is something that i talk about a lot maybe not on these videos but just in general and Bartiz and his band do the sparkly guitar really well you have to listen to understand what I'm talking about it just sprinkles this fairy dust <laughs> over everything the whole song you know it's so understated he really holds holds back isn't the word but he doesn't let it all show from the outset and he can do a lot of really interesting things with his voice but he keeps the vocals really understated on heavy hearts and lets the horn section yes there is a horn section i love a horn section it's so good and his guitar solos really do the emotional work of the song while he sings there's a reason for a heavy heart. All right, so we also wanted to talk a little bit about music that came out before 2022, but we only learned about 2022. It happens so sometimes. There's a lot of music. And it's mostly good. I wanted to start with, pardon me if I'm mispronouncing the name, but Miriam Gendron, she has an album from 2021, I believe, that is called Madelia, Songs of Love Lost and Found. She is a singer-songwriter, guitarist, and this album is just, it's largely folk music that she sings in both English and French. And it's very nostalgic feeling, even if you don't completely connect with what she's singing about. For instance, she sings Shenandoah in French on the album, and it is a beautiful experience. I just want to say I'm from the Shenandoah region, and... I completely connect with what she's singing about. I just wanted to bring up Emily D'Angelo. In uh, 2021, she released a recording of The Lotus Eaters from Sarah Kirkland Snyder's Penelope. So all of Penelope is great, but um, this is the only track from it that Emily D'Angelo has recorded. 
And I really like listening to big C classical singers record music that is not necessarily big C classical. Some navigate it better than others. And I feel like Emily D'Angelo navigates this really well. It's it's a really good listen. A group that I just discovered a few weeks ago, even though like they've been around and I don't know how this secret was kept from me. A band called Hop Along, um, fronted by Francis Quinlan. Oh my God, it's so good. And look, Francis does things with her voice that are so extraordinary. She has so many colors and she knows how to draw on them in a way that makes everything she has to say sound so intense and vital and important. A standout track that I love is called How Simple, which was kind of the song that turned me on to them. She, you know, she goes from this quiet whisper register to this like sort of screamando rock shout that is, I don't know, reminiscent of maybe Janis Joplin or Courtney Love. So uh, we also wanted to talk about music that is something that we've always loved, but we just rediscovered our love for in 2022. And I want- happens a lot. <laughs> yes. And I wanted to start this with Nina Simone's entire catalog. Oh my god, Nina Simone. <laughs> so fucking amazing. She could take any song and make it her own. I wanted to especially call out a very long list of songs, actually. But uh, Don't Smoke in Bed, You Can Have Him, which is totally heartbreaking. You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To, which if you look up her Newport Jazz Fest recording of that song, she and her guitarist turned this song into like a three-part Bachian invention. It is so Just good. Just Nina Simone things. Right, like who does that? It's so good. Of course, there's Mississippi Goddamn, which is one of the few songs that she actually wrote. This is a show tune, but the show hasn't been written for it yet. The song is so good, but it's also disheartening how current it still feels. Mm -hmm. Um, then we can get into like the, the song that most people know her for, which is Feeling Good. Yeah, something that I always talk about with this song is imagine not knowing about this song and then hearing it for the first time and like not knowing that those horns are about to come in. But I also wanted to talk about uh, The Other Woman, which is also quite heartbreaking. Um, I want to talk about Ain't Got No slash I Got Life, which are from the musical Hair. But she like put them together in such a way that sounds so meant for Nina to sing. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> I I already mentioned this before, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about Sarah Kirkland Snyder's Penelope. So the original album recording has Shara Nova singing, and it's such a good listen. And I think this is now permanently on my long drives listen. It's a really good listen to pay attention to but also sing along and it's emotional, but not to the point that I'm like openly weeping while I'm driving and endangering myself of car wrecks. So a lot of the rest of this is specific songs that I wanted to talk about. I had a moment a couple of weeks ago where I was um, sitting in my husband's car while he was going to run an errand. He had the radio set on like early 2000s mix, the radio, the like fake Radio. Satellite radio. And the song Vindicated by Dashboard Confessional came on. And like, I don't know if y'all know this, but in my teenage years, I was a total emo kid. <laughs> this Dashboard Confessional song came on and I was like, I think I have literally not heard this song in 15 years. And I was into it. <laughs> and now I'm on like a whole like emo revisit deep dive. I'm listening to the Atari's So Long Astoria, which is my favorite emo album. We had a whole um, My Chemical Romance moment earlier this evening because their song I'm Not Okay is extremely okay. All of these old uh, emo albums, Newfound Glory, a little bit of Fallout Boy, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so, is extremely my jam. <laughs> I was not, I was not an emo kid. And if you were going to guess which of us was the emo kid, you probably would have guessed me, but it was not. My fashion change. <laughs> Empress of Kitty Cat. So good. Don't kitty kitty cat me like I'm just your pussy. <laughs> Madonna, open your heart. So good. Overlooked Madonna hit. I hold the lock and you hold the key. So, Could there be a sexual metaphor there? Phoebe Bridger's motion sickness. Oh, another okay, another god tier lyric. I have emotional motion sickness. Somebody roll the window. Oh, down. somebody. 
Somebody roll the window down. Yeah, Phoebe Bridgers, like, is the queen of sad girls, and I love her. We tried to get tickets for her, and they sold out in, like, ten seconds, and we failed. Another reason to love Phoebe Bridgers is how she is very anti-turf. Chairlift, I belong in your arms, but the Japanese version. I feel like all gay people have been into this song lately because it was on the soundtrack of Heart We knew it first. <laughs> but I've been obsessed with the song for fucking like five ever. five years. So. Yeah. <laughs> but no, if you have not heard the Japanese version. Oh, it's so good. The song is... Just, like, joy in three minutes and however many seconds. Yeah. Also, like, a permanent song that I'm into is Cataldo's Ding Dong Scrambled Eggs. Oh, my God. This should be my new karaoke song. Um, you would crush that at karaoke. It's a really, really fun song. So give that song a listen if you do not know it. Oh, Mitski, First Love, Late Spring, which is like one of the best Mitski songs that I know we already talked about Mitski. This song <laughs> is on Bury Me at Make Out Creek. Yeah. First of all, okay, she sings in Japanese. A little bit. We've already <laughs> talked about singing in Japanese. It has that like teen angst that Mitski does so well. And I think Bury Me at Make Out Creek like that is titled for a reason. Here's a throwback to all the way back to 1969 because I just finished watching the Beatles Get Back documentary on Disney Plus. Thank you to my little sister for giving me her password so that I could watch it. It was so exciting to me because I have obviously known the Beatles music my entire life. It's just sort of been there running in the background forever as I think it is for most people of our generation and it was so interesting to me to see these four guys on TV like being dudes <laughs> like noodling around on music and making some of these iconic songs um, and then ultimately you know culminating in that famous iconic rooftop performance and so I have been listening to uh, some of the albums that sort of grew out of those studio sessions from the documentary so I listened to Abbey Road I listened to Let It Be and did you know that Paul McCartney was kind of like super smoking hot <laughs> another specific song that I've been really into lately has been Stevie Wonder's Sir Duke <laughs> partially because it is heavily sampled in an album that is part of our 1990 albums in review. I've also recently gotten back way into the Beths, especially their song Uptown Girl, which is not, not the Billy really Joel's. Joel. It's super fun though, give it a listen. Also still super into Beverly Glenn Copeland. He is a fantastic singer-songwriter. His song North Wind is, it's so good. Whenever you play it for me, I'm like, Holy shit. It's just like nothing you've ever heard. It's like anywhere. stop you in your tracks. Good music. In a very different type of good music, we've got Christine. Oh, uh, Christine. Tilted. Tilted is just so smooth and cool and I will never do, be do, that do, cool. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm doing my face with magic marker. Oh, she's so good. <laughs> All throughout June, I, for the most part, only listen to queer artists. Christine and the Queens reminded me how much I love Tilted throughout June. But one that stuck out to me that I forgot how much I fucking loved was Melissa Etheridge, I'm the Only One. Oh, so good. Like, when people think of Melissa Etheridge, they tend to first go to Come to My Window. Yeah. Which is also a fantastic song. It's a great song. song, but I think I'm the only one. It has an intensity that Come to My Window doesn't quite reach. Also, in my loving queer music, always and forever, is Perfume Genius Queen. Top tier queer anthem music. Yeah. On a completely different note, Flock of Dimes' song The Hard Way. She's so good. She is one of the best melody writers of the past 10 years. The Hard Way will fucking break your heart. The way that the song is just so simple and it highlights her gorgeous voice. She has such a good voice. Molly, what does it take for a song to be the song of the summer? I would say that it has to make me feel good. It has to make me want to learn all the words to it and dance along with it whenever it comes on. And it has to get played 
everywhere I go all summer long. What are some notable songs of the summer from previous years? California Girls by Katy Perry. I think Fantasy by Mariah Carey. Wait, is it Fantasy or is it Always Be My Baby? Uptown that... Funk. <laughs> oh, I do think of Uptown Funk, which is a song that I will carry in my heart for all time. <laughs> I think for the song of the summer to be the song of the summer, it needs to be immediately accessible, but also hold enough in it to be worth repeat listens for the entire summer. Well, and here's the thing about the song of the summer is there is the song of the summer and then there's like oh. my personal song of the summer <laughs> or a song of the summer yeah 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 i think uh, that there are different different ways but like like the song of the summer is like that is the song you cannot escape and mm-hmm. maybe you don't want to call me maybe <laughs> Was that a song in the summer? Call Me Maybe does have very strong ties to the very first Vermichael video, which is one of the ones that I have not privated. We have some possibilities for Song of the Summer for you. The first on the list is Lizzo's About Damn Time. You can't not smile. Yeah, I mean, I have previously like declared other Lizzo songs to be Song of the Summer because Lizzo makes you feel good. How many and- times have we seen her? Twice? Three twice. times? Okay, twice. twice. If you ever get a chance to go to a Lizzo concert, I, like, I highly recommend it. I call it the Lizzo therapy hour. <laughs> you will leave feeling happy. Yeah. And, and like, part of it is because you will dance your fucking ass <laughs> off God. during so it. Good. And just the um, the physical exertion helps. <laughs> it's the uh, exercise endorphins. Yeah. yeah. But, like, also, like, there's that whole, like, love yourself thing that she does um and this song about damn time does that too and i feel like a good song of the summer should just make you feel good and what lizzo song does not make you feel good yeah no sad songs for sad song of the summer it has to be happy songs only must be danceable these are the rules (laughs) yeah i think it's a strong contender Mm -hmm. earlier i had mentioned that a song of the summer that i thought was a contender was orville peck's daytona sands which is not necessarily explicitly danceable but it is explicitly sing-alongable mm-hmm. which I think makes up for the lack of danceability. Sing-alongable is an absolute definite necessary for a song of the summer. We have to talk about the new Beyonce song because every time Beyonce releases a new song it's an event. Her new song is taken us to the club (laughs) in 1992 (laughs) and we are having the night of our lives. I can't help but want to move while listening to it. Another contender for Song of the Summer is a song from last summer. Illuminati Hotties song Pool Hopping, but especially the remix. The remix with Barty Strange, who we already have talked about plenty. The original is so good. Yeah, the to original begin is with. Incredible. like let's not discount it. It is such a great pop rock song. The guitar riff. It's so angular. It immediately grabs you. Yeah. Oh, and then and it has this like shout singing, and it has these like quasi nonsense lyrics. We've argued about whether they're actually nonsense lyrics, but then Bartiz comes in and adds a verse. If we're talking about the song, we need to talk about the absolute most thrilling moment of this version of the song. Oh, when Bartiz jumps the octave. You don't see it coming and then it happens and then you're like, yes. It's exactly what you didn't know you needed. It is a (laughs) shot of adrenaline. So music turns out is really good. We like it. Listening to more music makes you more cool. And when you listen to it in the summer with a cold beverage, like an iced tea or a glass of rosé, it's really enhancing of the whole summertime experience. Yeah, we endorse music. We like you it. Should, you should listen to music. You should listen to music you like. Sometimes make yourself listen to music you don't like because it's good for you. And... Listen to music that you never heard of because you might like it. Yeah, challenge yourself as much as you are comfortable. Good night, everybody. It's night here. It's probably not when you're watching. I'm tired. I should have been home two hours ago. Okay, bye. Bye.